Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, my name is Ian, and this is my sermon. Um, so recently, I've been doing a lot of thinking about um, just like GPS systems. Um, I live in the city of Chicago. Honestly, it gets really confusing out here, um, especially you know going through downtown. You know, you have all these high-rise buildings and. Even when you get farther out of the city, it's like a lot of the buildings and uh, roads look the same. Um, and you know, I've been really thinking about how convenient having, oop, almost dropped it, a an iPhone is really helpful. You know, any place that I need to go, I can just quickly tap in uh, an address and pretty much can just look up how long it's gonna take me to get somewhere. Um, and then, you know, just zip on over. However, one thing I think that has continued to show me how my perspective on that might be a little veered off the right track um, is that even though the map says I'll be somewhere in 15 minutes, it doesn't mean that I'm going to get there in 15 minutes. It actually could mean maybe 30 because there's other outlying factors like traffic or I don't know maybe somebody gets in an accident and then there's this big hold up and or you have to do something last minute for your job or you have to go grab something from the store and it actually takes you a lot longer um, and while you're in it you actually are like wow why am I not there yet it like the map just said 15 minutes but I've been doing this for X amount of time and it just it's it's hard to understand why you aren't in the place that you want to be yet. Um, and I think a lot of us struggle with that. I know I definitely do, especially, um, and have in the past as well in my walk with Christ. And, you know, I think about the Israelites and them traveling from Egypt into the wilderness for four, then for 40 years being there until they even get to the land of Canaan. And um, I think that God does a really interesting job of teaching us and molding us through the journey um, and essentially I really believe that even though we might not be able to see exactly where we're headed God is with us as he continues to uh, move us on this journey and if we are to look over in um, oops sorry, I'm trying to find my uh, notes here um, yeah, if we look over into uh, Exodus thirteen twenty one, um, I think what God does is actually really cool. And what it says is, By day the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so that they could travel by day or by night. And so it's really interesting. It's like God has this whole plan mapped out for the Israelites and is literally providing a way no matter what the situation may be of getting to the destination um, and this is happening you know as they're headed out of the land of Egypt approaching the Red Sea um, and you know they don't really know where they're going they were very much like opposed to leaving um, at one point just because of everything that they had um, in Egypt and you know I can only imagine what it felt like to one finally being able to be let go then you're traveling through and you're just following this massive pillar knowing that it's God but it's like God where are you taking me and then all of a sudden we just end up at the ocean and it's like God there's literally people chasing us like right behind us like how are we going to get across here how are we going to make it you know to that destination that you've promised us and you know it's so funny I think God can give us a blueprint of where he wants to take us and what he wants to build in us but sometimes he wants us to be the ones to read the manual um and what does that mean it's like going in deep and understanding that this there is a process in getting to that destination and that it's going to take some work on your part um work in the practical but also work in in faith and so sometimes that faith has to triumph fear because fear will keep you behind um, the sea. And so, you know, I think if you are to really evaluate and understand the promise that God has really said over you, that should 
bring you over the humps of doubt and the humps of fear that you're going to face. And so, you know, as you continue to move forward in your walk and and wherever it may be, you know, you might be feel like you're called to be a doctor, but you're going to come to a your own red sea where you're filled with doubt and you're not sure what's going to happen next. It's like maybe you fell the MCAT or maybe I don't know, someone in your family passes away, you know, God forbid, but you know, these things can really weigh us down and it can make us question why we're doing what we're doing and why we're moving toward what we're moving to. And it's like, God, I know that you said this over me, but like, I just can't see me getting to the end. Um, However, God's provision is over each one of our lives and he makes a promise to always carry us through those hard times. Um, And by listening and following him, we will have a better understanding of his character and who he actually is and therefore understand the role he plays in us regardless of whether we can see it or not. Um, And so another thing I wanted to read is actually over in Exodus 15. Um, It's 26 through, uh, yeah, verse 26. Um, And this is God speaking to uh, Moses who then speaks to the Israelites. It says, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God, And do what is right in the sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought, which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. And essentially, you know, if we look at this verse, God is giving us a direct command that we need to listen to his voice and that we need to do what is right inside of the law, inside of the law and what he's commanded us to do. And I think sometimes we forget that we need to hear his voice and that we need to be patient and be steady on whatever it is that he's calling us to. And, you know, God continues to put us through tests and trials that will continue to strengthen us and build our character and build our perseverance and endurance and our faith. And, you know, if we are asking God for bigger faith, he's going to give you opportunities to have it. And so in those moments of fear, you're going to have to really wrestle with your flesh and acknowledging that you can't do this alone. The Egyptians could not do this alone. Moses and Aaron, they could not do this alone. Moses literally went from being a shepherd to leading, you know, thousands of people. I think if it were any one of us, there'd be no way that we could just do that right off the bat. He had to rely on the strength in which his father had given him and anointed him for And I think as we move into those places, we can become prideful. And we think that we are able to handle it. But that just isn't the case. We just, we unfortunately are not strong enough. Um, And so I really encourage you to press into the things that God is laying out for you as a foundation. And know that that isn't the the end all be all, that it's going to take work on your part and doing the the detailed uh things and so you know i think it can be it can be really hard to acknowledge who god is but if we look over in psalm 32 uh verse 8 it says i will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go and i will counsel you with my loving eye on you Um, And essentially, God is saying that, like, I'm here to take care of you. I'm here to show you which way is right and wrong. I'm here to show you which way I want you to go and want you to lead. But now you have to be the one who has to partner with it. You know, it's really easy to say, oh, yeah, like, I'm going to start reading my word every day. I'm going to start really um, praying, you know, every time I wake up in the morning. Um, You know, but those are just words. And, uh, you know, as we know in the New Testament is that, to paraphrase, you know, actions speak louder than words, you know, faith without works is dead. Um, and so, you know, I, as we continue to know more about who God is and his character and how he works in our lives, we will be better Christians, one, and also be uh, able to evangelize better and communicating exactly the character of God and getting through hard times and hard trials. Um, and so, I pray that you would take these words and that you would really sit with them and that you would really give them time and thought. I think God has an interesting way of showing us how to 
be silent and patient. If we look at Jesus, you know, he even had to depart from the disciples to go spend time alone with God. So I'd encourage you to take time to just sit with this, you know, turn off your phone, turn off the music, turn off whatever, find a, a quiet place where you feel comfortable and just be in his presence and speak to him on these things and ask him what ways are you being prideful or which ways that you need to really give things over to him so that he can help show you the blueprint, but then you can go out and do the work. Thank you.